Welcome to another episode of the Unrest Podcast. I'm Madeline Green. And I'm Caitlin Stansel. Thank you so much for joining us here again. We hope you like uh, the switch up to how we're kind of doing the episodes, focus more on the real life haunts. You know, we just love to hear your stories and be able to share those. So before we get into this one, please send us your stories. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, You can email them at theunrestpodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook. Yeah. And if you are not driving, pour yourself a drink before we get started with this real life haunt. Tonight, I am drinking a crisp, cool yingling. What about Mm. you, Caitlin? Um, Well, I do love a draft yingling when available, but tonight I have um, a Heineken. (laughs) So random, but my husband bought some when we were on a trip recently. And then we realized you need a bottle opener to open them so we just had to bring them all home (laughs) that's the best I like Heineken yeah they're not bad not a typical beer or drink choice for us though so it's funny that we now have like 12 of them in our fridge (laughs) get to drinking so for today's real life haunt we're gonna hear from a man named Dave Alexander he has some pretty interesting things to say about a house that he still actually lives in to this day So we bought the house, um, my son's 19 now, so we bought it 17 years ago. Um, so what I knew about the house um, was that it was part of an estate that the, the lady of the house was put into a nursing home. Um, the, the man of the house passed away in the house of like heart attack, natural causes, heart mm-hmm. attack, stroke, whatever. And so we buy the house and we don't think anything of it you know when you have an empty house empty older house the house is built in 1960 um you know it's always creepy at first you know when there's no furniture in here and you don't you're not comfortable in the house just yet so i'm in here doing renovations doing some things um you know painting that sort of thing at night and then we finally move in and situation was that my my son at that time was two Mm mm-hmm when we first moved in and in the in my backyard there is a what i call it's, it's a shed but it's got a, a really cool front porch on it it reminds me of like a, a hillbilly shack if you would you know the, <laughs> the typical pictures of a hillbilly shack with a little front porch little one room building um and at that time there was nothing on the front porch because we just moved in you know we haven't cluttered it yet so the deal is He's got, he, you know, those really big balls that you would get from like Kmart or Walmart that have the little net bins, standalone bins. Um, they're balls mm-hmm. like two and a half, three foot in diameter. Right. Um, so he had one of those, of course, like every little kid does. And he was talking to somebody. He was, he was on that porch talking to somebody at the, at the uh, like six, six and a half foot level. Um, and he's just going on and on and on talking about his ball or whatever. And we're like, okay, so, you know, he's got a little friend. So we're like, okay, whatever. And so when he comes back in the house, I said, I said, Honor, who were you talking to? He says, I was talking to Louie. And he was talking all about Louie does this and Louie does that and blah, 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 just going on and on about Louie. So we're like, okay. Well, we knew that the owner of the house's name was John. So it wasn't John. So, all right, so we're cool. We're going about our day. We're, we're, you know, getting the house all done. And, and about three days later, um, the next door neighbor comes over. Now, keep in mind, this was a very tight knit neighborhood. All of these houses were one owner homes. I was the second owner of this house. So, you know, they, they raised, they, they had the house built, raised their family here. And now, you know, everybody in the neighborhood was older. They were in their, you know, seventies, eighties, whatever. So, so the deal is that the neighbor comes over and he's like, Hey, I want to introduce myself and, you know, see how you're doing if you need anything. And he says, so how are you enjoying Louie's house? And my, my wife and I looked at each other like, what do you mean? 
Well, yeah, his name was John, but um, his son was John as well, and and so he always called himself Louis. So, what in the world? The fact that that their son had they thought was like this imaginary friend named Louis, and they thought they were in the clear because the man who owned the house, his name was John, and then come to find out, wow, like they actually called him Louis. And that's the person who their son was talking to. How crazy is that? And I mean, Louis not like a common name today. <laughs> so it's like, where did this kid get this name if it wasn't from the Louis who is past? <laughs> right. It reminds me of, I don't know if you remember, but in the very first season we did, I told you guys about a story of a little girl who had an imaginary friend. His name was uh, Mr. Gordy. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of the same exact thing. Like, Mr. Gordy used to live at her house. And that's kind of how this story goes with Louie. So fast forward a little bit, you know, and this this went on for about 10, 12 years. Because um, we've been here now for 17. So it's been about five years since it's been quiet. Mm -hmm. So so fast forward a few years. Um, we have a friend come over. And, and, well, friends, you know, we were having not really a party, but, you know, we had guests over the house and the way our dining room was set up at that time we had a pocket door separating the hallway uh, from the dining room and so so we always left it open so the situation was that um now my my wife well, actually she's my ex but you know the wife and i were sitting there with our backs to the pocket door and our friends were sitting across um so they could see into the hallway and they both kind of looked at each other kind of weird and the one says who's the old guy that just walked down the hall like mm. like um i don't know describe him what's he look like well you know old guy probably you know late 60s 70s um tan pants you know like the dickies pants like old guys wear and and a red uh, flannel or plaid shirt and my my ex says well um why don't why don't you go introduce yourself? You know, she she's looking at me like, yeah, let's play this out and see what happens. So she's like, so why don't you go introduce yourself? So they're like, okay. So so she gets up, she goes around the table, she goes to the pocket door, and she she goes into the living room. She, well, she's looking at the living room, and she comes back with this look on her face like, uh, WTF. The door didn't open. There's nobody in your living room. And he walked that way. Hmm. And, and so we're like, uh... Yeah, so you're the first person that's ever actually seen him. Um, we've heard him. We've, you know, other than other than our son. Um, so you're the first person that we've ever known that's actually been able to describe what he looked like. So not only is it crazy that, you know, the little boy at the beginning befriended Louie. Now they have, like, people at their dinner parties or whatever it was seeing him as well which is pretty interesting but also like <laughs> the wife and him weren't playing along like on their friend trying to get them to like go I don't know like, I just feel like figure out what this is I would be like um what do you mean you just saw an old man walk through her house <laughs> like what? right right <laughs> not like hey go introduce yourself I feel like they probably had a feeling that some sort of paranormal activity was going on. And I think they were just surprised that someone else was experiencing it, you know, rather than just them living in that house. Yeah. Right. You know, we start telling about different little things that would happen. Um, my wife's keys would wind up being put in the freezer. <laughs> um, so yeah, I always thought it was just her being flighty and, and a little absent-minded. Um, but you know, when you start thinking about it, hindsight's twenty twenty. You start thinking about different things that have happened. Um, you know, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, this might not have been her fault or it might not have been my fault or whatever. So pictures get rearranged in the house. You know, pictures on like the mantle or, you know, on tables and stuff like that would get rearranged, switched around. Um, it's almost like, no, I like this one over here and I like that one over there sort of idea. Yeah. Um, so, but nothing was ever destroyed or hurt or anything like that, you know. And then we had one incident. Um, he, uh, my son was still a toddler, and 
um, he was in his toddler bed. It was about two, three o'clock in the morning. And um, let me preempt this by saying that we have we had a couple dogs at the time, and one of them we always wanted to have her sleep on the bed with us. Um, she was our first dog we ever got together, but she, the dog refused. My she her logic was my place is on the floor. I will sleep on the floor, and every time you try to put her up on the bed, she would definitely run off the bed like, no, no, I'm not allowed up here. Um, I wish my dog felt like that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine definitely doesn't. <laughs> She's like, oh, this is my bed, but you guys are more than welcome. <laughs> Scoot over. <laughs> so now, two, three o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden I hear on our bedroom door not on the um, not on the front door not on the back door on the master bedroom door we heard three knocks hard knocks like a cop once in your house sort of knock and she's like did you hear that and i'm like yeah i did she's like go check it out i'm not gonna check it out you check it out uh no the husband checks it out (laughs) like i'm not gonna check it out you check it out like (laughs) You check it out, Dave. You check it out. So my my choice of weapons in the house is a, a, a T-ball bat. Mm-hmm. Um, small, compact. It's not a gun, so I'm not going to kill anybody. So I, I grab the bat, and I open up the door, and I swing around, and I turn the, the light in our room on because I wasn't going to reach my hand out into the door, into the hallway right where that was until I know what was out there. So I, I slammed open the door, turned our light in there to put light into the hallway, and nothing. Completely checked out every room in the house. Doors were locked. Nobody else in the house. I checked every closet. I even checked the hall closet that a human could not fit into. Still check that out. Nothing. That would be pretty scary. I'm just thinking about being in my room and hearing a knock on our bedroom door would be kind of creepy to me. And, like, how do you get back in bed and, like, go to sleep after that? <laughs> well, Dave didn't. He got his T-ball bat. <laughs> Killer on the prowl. And the reason I mentioned that dog that refused to get up on the bed, when that those knocks happened, that dog not only jumped up on the bed, but she was shaking incessantly between my head and the headboard. She's like, Daddy, protect me. And I don't know what's out there, but I don't like it. And she was the dog that refused to get up on the bed. And she was on the bed. And if she could have been under the under the cover, she would have. Yeah, there was that. I mean, I feel like when an animal reacts, that makes it so much more real, too. Like, you can almost kind of talk yourself out of hearing some things. But then when, A, others around you are reacting and also animals, I mean, it's hard to deny. Right. My my theory is that he was the first owner of the house. He can't, you know, he had the house built. He, you know, he loved this place. He raised his family here. And he wanted to make sure that it was going to be in the hands of a family that was going to enjoy it as much as he did. And after, you know, after he realized, okay, so everything's good, no issues, no problems, then off he went. That was my theory. I haven't had any activity in this house in probably five, six years now, probably. But yeah, in the beginning, it was creepy, and we actually thought about selling it. Um, But it was nothing, you know, we talked ourselves out of it because it was nothing bad. I feel like it's almost as if this ghost, he realized, you know, they were going to keep the house. They were no threat to him that he just kind of disappeared and stopped visiting them, you know? It's like Beetlejuice when the couple, <laughs> they're ghosts and they like interact with the family. And then at the end of it, they kind of just live together. <laughs> right? That's how it in- ends, doesn't it? I don't think I ever saw Beetlejuice. You never saw Beetlejuice? No. <gasps> you would love it. I know that she says Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, you don't say it three times out loud. Now he's going to come for you. He's funny, though. <laughs> my my parents both passed away four months apart from each other. Um, so my, my mom died of um, 
all kinds of things. She was diabetic. Um, she had uh, a couple mini strokes, and you know the doc, the coroner pretty much said, "Yeah, she died of everything that she had combined." Um, there was a couple times that when um, you know the house was a little on the creepy side. You know, it was an older house and stuff, and there was a couple times that um, people would hear my my mom. You know, we we were still in the house and. It, it, I swear, it was like my mom was calling my dad's name. It was weird. And there was one time when I was still up, my dad was asleep, and I thought I heard it, and my dad would fly back. That was really creepy to me, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to bed because <laughs> I don't want to get into a conversation or hear a conversation that, you know, you know, so my my dad you know my dad passed away four months later um instantaneous cardiac arrest and mm. literally died of a broken heart so he passed away and you know a few years later i was i was sleeping and i swear he had come and you know sitting on the bed he and i he and i both worked together so you know the work we did was in boiler rooms and stuff like that so it was hot sweaty nasty work and so, you know, like like any person, you know, you start sweating and you're dirty, you're going to stink until you get a shower. And I swear there was times when I could smell his musk. And and it was like, it was weird. But he came and I swear he came, and I had a dream that he came and he, he was mad at me for giving up the, the family business. And he was like, well, why, why did you give it up? He says, I was coming back. I'm like, dude, you died. You weren't coming back. I got into an argument with my deceased father in this dream. It was messed up. But the next morning, my wife wakes up, and she's like, you showered last night, right? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, just smells like sweaty guy. You know, like the smell of a, swe- you know, a sweaty guy in here. You know, and I'm like, I-, I couldn't smell it, but she could. Right. And it's like, okay, so did that really happen or did it not? I don't know. It was weird. If I die <laughs> and you can smell my musk, please. <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> yep. That's Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave, this morning, a friend sent you a video. Kind of talk about that video. I found it pretty interesting. So, um, she, she texted me yesterday morning. She works at a daycare. Um, And I'm not going to say where, but she works at a daycare, and it's a pretty old building. So she she sent me a picture first of this this cup, um, like a a red um, a solo cup that had fallen over, but it looked like I thought it was coffee. So it turns out that it was soil. Now that cup full of soil was sitting on top of the refrigerator that it was sitting next to. And so, uh, first things first, is she hits me up and says, I think we have a ghost. I'm like, okay, why? Um, so, she uh, she explained that the cup was on top of the fridge, and it was pretty, you know, it was pretty full, so it would have been pretty heavy. Um, and it was Sunday night. Um, she walked in yesterday morning, Monday morning, to find it, and there was nobody in there over the weekend so i said all right so so let's think about things for a minute was anybody in there cleaning no um was any was there where's the air conditioning unit you know is it the case where maybe the air conditioning would have maybe blown something over or something like that no then she explained to me that it was sitting on top of the fridge so if you think about the fridge to the kitchen kitchen counter that's a pretty fall far drop so if, if it would have fallen over, if it would have tipped over and spilled the dirt out and then maybe the cup blew off afterwards or rolled off, there would have been soil everywhere or just in one little spot and then the cup sitting kind of on top. So that was kind of weird. Then she showed me the video. Now the video shows this, for lack of a better term, orb going from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and then it kind of disappears about three quarters of the way across the room now when it in the direction that it went to to the right side is where that refrigerator is so he he sent us the video and picture 
that's a pretty distinct little orb Mm -hmm. Hmm. and like the camera picked it up so yeah and i feel like it was um more solid than most orbs are interesting and it's interesting that it is headed in that same direction as the soil that's in the cup there was there was a situation where there was a while back there was an uh, an incident where uh, a woman had had killed and killed an infant um killed some family members one of them being an infant um and uh, i'm not going to elaborate a little a lot on that but uh, you know the so the situation was is that um that infant was one of the daycare one of the children that was in their daycare mm. whether that was the baby or not because that was in the infant's room where the baby was you know where because she had she had tended taking care of the baby um before that before his death so um whether it was the baby or not nobody knows you know obviously but um but yeah that was really kind of weird what a terrible story that is but what i instantly thought of was that that orb kind of like traveled along the ground. And I know this is really like far-fetching, but like almost like a baby crawling. And spilling the dirt, more like a playful thing. I mean, like you said, what a tragic story, Um, you know, whatever happened with this baby. But clearly it still has some connection to this building that's now used or still used as a daycare. And who knows? I mean, it could definitely be a coincidence, but it was definitely uh, something cool that, you know, it was sent to him right before he could share it with us. So, wow. I mean, Dave A has a lot of stories. And I was just saying during our last episode that it seems women are more sensitive, but he has proved me wrong. Dave, damn it, Dave. <laughs> I love the the story of the estate house, that whole thing with Louie. I mean, that's the type of activity that I would be open to, you know, just like a nice old grandpa following you around, you know, but not in my house, maybe like at a place I work or something, but like in my house, I want to like not worry about someone knocking on my master bedroom door in the middle of the night. But I'm, I'm just saying like, is it either, um, uh-huh true the nice grandpa or is it the demon next door like I'm gonna go (laughs) true 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 we'll take Louie (laughs) the story with his parents I mean just the fact that you know they died so close together and he had these experiences kind of while closing loose ends of you know their lives and his dad hearing like his mom you know call his name and then him having you know uh dreams about his dad it just I thought that was really cool too. Those are kind of sweet experiences, memories. Yeah, I like hearing about those. Thank you, Dave, for sharing those stories with us. We loved them and we want to hear from you guys. Also, we want to hear Bigfoot stories. Does anyone know any Bigfoot stories? I think my, I don't know if you remember this, Caitlin, but when we were in college (laughs) at the University of South Carolina, go women's basketball national champions Uh, (laughs) I did I don't remember what the story was on but somehow we ran across I wish I could remember his name I it's like literally on the tip of my tongue anyway we ran across um this man in North Carolina who has had Bigfoot at his house and literally it's the best YouTube video in the whole wide world Tim Peeler Tim Peeler. And what's even better than that is I didn't even have to look it up. It came to me that quick. <laughs> that's how much I love this man, Tim Peeler. But wait, yeah, wait, so this was just like a video you found though, right? So no, he was on the news somewhere. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. And they did a news story about how he saw Bigfoot. Okay, I remember now. Yes. And he's from I wanna say not too far from me. In Cleveland County, and this isn't the first time. The legend continues. One man in Kayser says he encountered the mythic beast just last week. You know, it has been years since deputies in Cleveland County have heard stories like this, and new at 11, Ann Sheridan goes in search of the real Bigfoot story. I tried to call him. 
Tim Peeler thought <coughs> he was calling coyotes. Instead of them. Him. Him. He got something that frightened even this self-proclaimed mountain man. This thing was 10 foot tall. He had beautiful hair. All right, that's all you get. I mean, Hold it on, is. Wait, 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 wait. We have to find Tim Peeler. I would love to find him. If you guys know Tim Peeler out there, help us, help us, help us find him, him we because him on the podcast, if we found him, our lives would be changed. <laughs> I mean, I'm just putting it out there. Bigfoot stories, alien stories, ghost stories. We love it all. We want to hear it all. So email us at the unrest podcast at gmail.com. Yes. So definitely check us out on social media, Facebook, Facebook group, Instagram. You can send us a message there as well. If you have something you want to share with us and we don't just do, you know, emails. We also do interviews like Dave did today. So send us your stories and until then unrest in peace. peace.